Thank you, Professor Mikhail von Bergwert, for your kind introduction and the excellent organization of the seventh immunotherapy of cancer conference in Munich. I am Toshio Hirano, president of National Institute for Quantum and Radiological Science and Technology, or QST in short. It is my great honor to be awarded the ITOC7 Lifetime Achievement Award and give an honorary award lecture. At this special occasion, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to the chairman and all members of the Bright Committee. I thank all my colleagues without whose collaboration and helps. It was impossible for me to give a lecture today. Now we know that acute inflammation is a well-controlled response during the process of immune response to a pathogen or wound healing. On the other hand, chronic inflammation, which is an uncontrolled inflammation, is closely related with chronic inflammatory disease, autoimmune disease, and cancer. Cytokine storm, which is considered to be uncontrolled acute inflammation, plays crucial roles in infectious disease and cytokine release syndrome in CAR T therapy. Of note is that severe form of COVID-19 is considered to be induced by cytokine storm. Chronic inflammation is induced by a variety of initiators, such as injury, infection, stress, senescence, and obesity, so on. There are a lot of lymphocytes and myeloid cells, as well as adipocytes, fibroblasts, epithelial cells, and endothelial cells are involved in chronic inflammation. These cells produce pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as iron, R6, and TNF-alpha. Furthermore, several transcriptional factors are activated. Among them, both STAS3 and NF-kappa B play crucial roles in chronic inflammation related to disease. Synergistic interaction between STAS3 and NF-kappa B induce the ISX amplifier, or ISX amp in short, a mechanism for the hyperactivation of NF-kappa B by STAS3. The ISX amp amplifies the production of various pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, including interleukin-6, and recruit lymphoid cells and myeloid cells, such as activated T cells and macrophage, in the region, to further strengthen the interleukin-6 amp. Chronic inflammation enhances cell survival and proliferation through induction of chemic, BCL2, cyclines, and PIM kinase zone. Furthermore, it enhances immune response by affecting the balance of Th17 and Treg, for example, and causes chronic inflammatory disease and autoimmune disease. It is also critically involved in cancer development and progression by enhancing cancer cell survival and proliferation while inhibiting tumor immunity and inducing angiogenesis, epithelial mesenchymal transition, EMT, and metastasis. Today, I'd like to discuss IL-6 AMP and local initiation model in relation to their roles in inflammation, autoimmunity, and cancer. Now we know that there are a lot of cytokines. Inhibitors of these cytokines are beneficial for chronic inflammatory disease and autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis and CAR-T-related cytokine release syndrome. Furthermore, it is considered that they could be applicable for cancer treatment. Fifty years ago, when I graduated Osaka University Medical School, we had already known that 
interaction of immune cells, such as T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and macrophages, are required for immune responses. In response to antigenic stimulation, immune cells produce several soluble factors, which are required for immune responses. In 1971 and 1972, Michel Dutton and Shrimp and Becker, respectively, reported the presence of soluble factors, which could replace the helper functions of T lymphocyte, and thereby they called it T cell replacing factor TRF. However, the molecular nature of these soluble factors were completely unknown. Immunologists called each factor by his or her own name based on the biological activity he or she examined, and thereby there are lots of names corresponding to the numbers of immunologists. After three years of research on the regulation of cytotoxic T cell differentiation and solid factors involved in this process at Dr. Norzin's lab, NIH, the United States, I returned to Osaka University Medical School in 1976, and thereafter, I moved to Osaka Prefecture Habikino Hospital in 1978. There, I saw many patients with pulmonary tuberculosis. I found that purified protein derivative PPD stimulated broiler effusion cells of the patient produce solid factors capable of inducing immunoglobin production in B cells. Since this activity seemed to be very strong and a large amount of lymphocyte could be obtained from one patient, I thought it might be possible to purify the active factors. Then I decided to isolate this active factor and started its purification in 1978. I found that the culture supernatant of the proiral effusion cells contains an active factor having the same biological activity and physical chemical properties of a cytokine, which is now called interleukin-6, and at that time I called TRF-like factor or BCDF2. Therefore, for me, interleukin-6 is a gift from patients with tuberculosis. I then moved to Kumamoto University Medical School in 1980 and continued the purification and the characterization of this factor. Then I moved to Osaka University as an associate professor at Professor Kishimoto's lab in early 1984. I finally succeeded on its purification and determined its N-terminal 14 amino acid sequence at the end of 1984. I had a prospective view for the next 1985 year, and I very much enjoyed the New Year holiday with a big dream. However, reality was very hard. Our several trials to clone the CDNA encoding this active molecule had completely failed in 1985. This raised a doubt if the sequence I determined was wrong or it might be the sequence of the other proteins co-purified with the active molecule. This doubt induced severe arrhythmia, which disturbed my sleep at the end of 1985. A medical checkup showed that my arrhythmia was just psychogenic. Then I had decided to purify the molecule again, utilizing newly obtained 100 liter of culture supernatant. For this time, I challenged the way with high risk. I digested the purified protein to obtain several fragments. Fortunately, I could determine the partial N-terminal amino acid sequence of several fragments in March 1986. Then I started cloning the CDNA again by using three probes. I believe that this way would be surer than the way I previously took using only one probe 
corresponding to N terminal amino acid sequence in 1985. After overcoming eight years' difficulties, it suddenly came into view. 11 a.m., Sunday morning, May 25th, 1986, I obtained the clone which bound all three probes. It was just in my hand. It was not a dream. It was a real fact. I was very much confident that I finally cloned the CDNA encoding the molecule, which I called BSF2 at that time. Nucleotide sequence of the CDNA shows that BSF2 is synthesized as a precursor consisting of 212 amino acids and is processed into a material form consisting of 184 amino acids. Molecular cloning of BSF2 reveals that BSF2 IL-1 inducing 26 kilodalton protein, interferon beta-2, plasma cytoma, hybridoma, myeloma, growth factor, and hepatocyte stimulating factor are identical molecules. Therefore, the nomenclature meeting chaired by Dr. Bill Paul, which was held in New York on December 14, 1988, proposed the name of interleukin-6 for this molecule. Thus, the name of interleukin-6 was born. I wish to isolate a factor acting on B cells to induce immunoglobulin production. However, once I cloned the factor, IL-6 was found to act not only on B cells, but also on a variety of cells. It acts on hepatocyte to induce a variety of acute phase proteins. It activates osteoclast. It is a growth factor for myeloma cells. It increases platelet and it even induces fever. IL-6 is now known to be a multifunctional cytokine that plays a role in the immune response, inflammation, hematopoiesis, endocrine, and nervous system, and even in early development. Anyway, once a ligand such as IL-6 was cloned, it was not so difficult for us to isolate its receptor in the late 1980s. In fact, we cloned the CDNAs, encoding ISC receptor alpha chain and signal transducing receptor subunit unit GP130. Furthermore, it was found that GP130 is shared among other cytokine receptors, such as those of IL-11, Oncostatin M, RIF, CT1, CNTF, and IL-27, and so on, showing that there is the IL-6 family of cytokines. Patients with cardiac soma show a variety of autoimmune symptoms, such as hypergamma globulinemia, the presence of autoantibodies, and an increase in acute phase proteins, all of, all of which disappeared after the resection of the tumor cells, suggesting that Cardiac myxoma cells may induce autoimmunity. I found that cardiac myxoma cells produce IL-6. This is the first suggestive evidence indicating that IL-6 might be involved in autoimmunity. Important find came next. I found that a large amount of IL-6 is present in the synovial fluids of patients with rheumatoid arthritis suggesting the involvement of IL-6 in rheumatoid arthritis. As I mentioned, BSS-2, 26 kilodalton protein, hepatocyte stimulating factor, hybridoma, plasma cytoma, myeloma, growth factor are identical. Therefore, this molecule is called interleukin-6. IL-6 is produced by cardiac myxoma cells, and IL-6 is abundant in synovia fluid of rheumatoid arthritis. Following these findings, it was found that pristine or mineral oil 
inducers of r 6 and chronic inflammation, induces plasma cytoma, arthritis, and other antibody production. We show that r 6 transgenic mice develop polyclonal plasma cytosis and plasma cytoma. Considering the relationship between inflammation and cancer, pointed out by Rudolf Virchow in 1863, all these evidence obtained in late 1980s to early 1990s raised the idea that IL-6 is involved in inflammation, autoimmunity, and B-cell malignancies. Since patients with rheumatoid arthritis show a variety of symptoms, such as polyclonal plasma cytosis, accompanied with production of rheumatoid factor, increase of acute face proteins and agalactosyl IgG, and enhanced bone resorption activity and increase of platelet number so on, which do not apparently have any relationship each other. However, these symptoms could be explained by a single molecule, IL-6, since IL-6 is a multifunctional cytokine having activities capable of inducing these phenomena. This led me to speculate that a cause which triggers dysregulated IL-6 gene expression or abnormal IL-6 function is closely related to the cause inducing rheumatoid arthritis. In early 1990s, I proposed the working hypothesis, which is a prototype of local initiation model. In the hypothesis illustrated in this old slide, activation of a set of transcription factors such as NF kappa B is a central factor governing the onset as well as the progression of the disease. In the initial phase, the activation of the transcription factors is induced by a variety of stimuli, including infection, stimulation with foreign materials, such as pristine and injury. This initial stimulation induces the inflammation that activates a set of transfer factors, leading to the expression of various genes encoding cellular proteins, including R6 and other cytokines, MHC molecules, adhesion molecules, autoantigens, and several transcription factors. Thus expressed autoantigens could be recognized by autoreactive T cells and T cells further promote the inflammatory response. Initiation step is induced in non-immune cells by local initiators, and it is followed by autonomous loop by several mechanisms. The initial step occurs in non-immune cells interact with immune cells. This model shows that local initiators in the target tissue trigger the interaction between non-immune cells and immune cells, and such an interaction plays a critical role in chronic inflammatory proliferative disease, autoimmune disease, and neoplasia. Very similar idea is proposed by Biden in 1964. He pointed out the importance of local events, such as injury or infection, as a trigger of inflammation, followed by the destruction of the target tissue. Wilkin proposed the primary region theory that primary region may trigger autoimmunity, rather than the popular view that the primary cause of autoimmunity is a breakdown of self-tolerance. The local initiation model is in principle si similar to both ideas, but the local initiation model emphasizes the key role of transcription factors such as NF-kappa-B and STAT-3 
which can simultaneously induce multiple things and be activated by, by a variety of local initiators, including injury, infection, physical stress, aging, and oncogenic mutation, as discussed today. Therefore, the local initiation model would be applied not only on inflammatory disease and autoimmune disease, but also on age-related disease and cancer. We showed IL-6 induced two major signaling pathways, the STAT3 signal and the SHP2 gap map kinase signal in a manner dependent on the YXXQ motif and the Y759 of GP130 respectively. To clarify the in vivo roles of each of signaling pathway, we made knocking mouse lines expressing mutated GP130 defective of either YXXQ or Y759 signaling pathway. STAT3 activation through GP130 was enhanced in one of knocking mouse lines, which is called F759 mice, expressing GP130 of which Y759 was mutated to phenylalanine. The reason is that Y759 is required for SOX3 mediated stop signal. The most important finding is that F759 mice spontaneously developed rheumatoid arthritis like joint disease as aged. This is the first definitive evidence showing that R6 is critically involved in spontaneous age-dependent autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis. Studies using bone marrow trans transplantation and various knockout strains will demonstrate that the arthritis is CD42 dependent. However, GP130 F759 mutation is not required in T cells, but it is required in non hematopoietic cells. Thus, the interaction between immune cells and non immune cells is critically involved in F759 arthritis. Furthermore, primary cause is present in non immune cells. We found that IL-17 induces IL-6 in non-immune cells, including fibroblast cells. Importantly, both IL-6 and IL-17 are required for F759 arthritis. Important find we made is that IL-17 induces IL-6 gene expression through nf kappa -B activation is augmented in the presence of IL-6. This synergistic induction of R6 gene is mediated by enhanced activation of NF kappa B through an interaction between NF kappa B and STAT3. Since R6 can induce TH17 cells, and enhanced activation of NF kappa B induces several cytokines such as R6 and TNF alpha. IL-6 production is further enhanced. We named this amplification mechanism of IL-6 production as the IL-6 amplifier, or IL-6 amp in short. As discussed in data, the IL-6 amp is a mechanism for the hyperactivation of NF kappa B by star 3, and therefore, the IL-6 amp amplifies the production of not only, or not only IL-6, but also a variety of pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, all of which are target genes of NF-kappa-B. 
More importantly, Isaac's AMP in type 1 collagen positive tissue is required for the arthritis. Immune cells and non-immune cells interact each other through Isaac's AMP, which is dependent on NF kappa B and STAT3. F759 mutation enhances IL-6-mediated STAT3 activation due to the lack of suppression of SOX3, resulting in the chronic activation of IL-6 AMP, leading to F759 arthritis. Consistent with this scenario, HTLV1 P40 tax capable of activating NF-kappa-B enhances F759 arthritis. Of note is that polyclonally activated CD4 T cells are required for the arthritis, but antigen-specific T cells are not required. Then the question is, what determines the tissue specificity of the disease? Answer is that, Local initiator, such as microbreeding, does. As shown in this slide, after the in vivo transfer of activated polyclonal TH17 cells, arthritis is induced in the left leg where microbreeding is done, but not in the right leg, which is intact. Therefore, a local initiator, such as microbreathing, determines the tissue specificity of the disease where polyclonal activated CD4 T cells are involved. Importantly, even experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, EAE, where tissue specific CD4 T cells are involved, is dependent on the RS AMP in type 1 collagen positive non-immune cells. The question is how the RS AMP is involved in the disease where antigen specific T CD4 T cells are involved. We show that in the case of EAE, antigen specific T cells entry into the central nervous system is dependent on the RS AMP in non-immune cells. Rexoreus muscle detects gravity. Gravity stimulation is transmitted to endothelial cells at a fused lumbar cord through sensory sympathetic neuron pathway. Norepinephrine secreted from sympathetic neuron enhances ice amp in endothelial cells. Emoji specific TH17 cells enter the central nervous system via dorsal blood vessels at L5 in a manner dependent on chemokine, one of the targets of ISOX AMP. Therefore, neural stimulation is determined the site where antigen specific T cell enter central nervous system through the ISOX AMP activation. Further, we show that pain also affects EAE by activating ISOX AMP through sensory sympathetic neuron pathway. These evidence indicate that neural stimulation is one of local initiators which can activate ISOX AMP and involves in autoimmune disease such as EAE where antigen specific T cells are involved. Correctly, we hypothesize that any local initiators such as infection, injury, neural stimulation, and physical stimulation capable of activating RSX AMP through either STAT3 activation or NF-kappa B activation or both plays crucial role in causing autoimmune disease. This scenario could be applied not only in autoimmune disease, but also in chronic inflammatory disease and cancer. Then we wish to identify target gene as well as regulator of the RX AMP. For this, we employed genome-wide screening utilizing SHRNA lentivirus library and DNA microassay. 
We identified about 1,200 mouse genes involved in the regulation of the iris amp, and about 500 mouse target genes and 900 human target genes of the iris amp. Interestingly, human disease-associated genes are highly enriched in the identified genes related with the I6 AMP. The result supports the idea that I6 AMP is involved in many human inflammatory and autoimmune disease. These diseases include rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, and other inflammatory disease. Furthermore, cancer-related genes, including R6, CIMIC, VEGF-alpha, ABB1, BCL2, and HIF1-alpha, are enriched in the r amp related genes. Therefore, all evidence indicates that IL-6 AMP plays a key role in chronic inflammatory disease, autoimmune disease, and cancer. This is further supported by a lot of studies showing the involvement of IL-6 GP130 sursely in tumor genesis. For example, development of pristine or mineral oil-induced plasma cytoma which is related to its inflammation, is dependent on IL-6. Another knocking mouse, GP130 F757, showing hyperactivation of SAS3 through GP130, develop gastric hyperplasia and colitis associated cancer. Development of activated mutant EGF receptor induced lung cancer and colitis associated cancer are dependent on IL-6 and SAS3. Development of obesity related to hepatocellular carcinoma is dependent on IL-6. Senescence cells may contribute to cancer development by producing IL-6. The correlation between R6 and the prognosis of 23 different cancer types is demonstrated. Somatic gain of function mutation in GP130, which activates GP130 starts signaling, causes inflammatory hepatocellular tumors. Loss of function mutation of TRAF3, a negative regulator of R6 Stat 3 signaling is observed in B3 lymphoma and multiple myeloma patient. Helicobacter pylori, hepatitis B virus, and hepatitis C virus activate Stat 3. A variety of local initiators such as injury, infection, stress through neurostimulation, senescence, obesity, Mutation in preneoplastic cells and so on initiate chronic inflammation. This initiation is occurs in non-immune cells such as adipocyte, fibroblast, epithelial cells, and endothelial cells. Furthermore, it is likely that virus or CAR-T-induced massive cell death plays local initiators to cause life-threatening cytokine storm, which is considered to be uncontrolled acute inflammation. In consistent with this, CAR-T-induced cytokine release syndrome is dependent on IL-6 and anti ir receptor antibody, so Shilizumab, is effective to treat patients with cytokine storm. Several transfer factors play important roles in this process. Among them, both SAS3 and nf kappa b play crucial roles. Then, several pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines are produced, including interleukin-6. 
Eventually, ice amp is dysregulated, reactivated in a manner dependent on genetic and environmental factors, resulting in the enhanced production of R6 and many target genes of R6 amp. In lymphocytes, as well as myeloid cells, are accumulated in the region in response to chemokines produced by the R6 amp. The, then the R6 amp is further enhanced, resulting in amplification of the production of a variety of pro inflammatory cytokines. Chronic inflammation thus induced enhances cell survival and proliferation through induction of chemic b to cyclin and p kinase so on. Furthermore, it enhances the immune response and causes chronic inflammatory disease and autoimmune disease, and in certain con conditions, it causes severe cytokine storm syndrome when the ice amp is acutely activated in an uncontrolled manner. Moreover, it promotes cancer development by inducing cell survival and proliferation, enhancing angiogenesis, EMT, and metastasis of cancer cells while inhibiting tumor immunity. In conclusion, I, the ISX amp plays a central role in chronic inflammation and therefore it is critically involved in inflammation-related diseases such as autoimmune and chronic inflammatory diseases and cancer, and even cytokine storm syndrome and uncontrolled acute inflammation. Therefore, IL-6 is a major target of therapeutic ways of these diseases and hopefully severe COVID-19. Lastly, I'd like to explain the possible mechanism by which SARS coronavirus 2 induce cytokine storm and uncontrolled acute inflammation. As SARS coronavirus 2 utilizes ACE2 as a receptor, virus infection results in the decrease of cell surface excretion of ACE2, which is a peptidase of angiotensin 2 resulting in an increase of angiotensin 2. In addition, virus-induced lung injury activates renin angiotensin system, further increasing serum angiotensin 2 levels. As a result, angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor mediated signaling is enhanced. These events eventually enhance inflammatory response including increase of TNF-alpha and soluble form of ice receptor alpha. Virus infection itself activates signaling through pathogen recognition receptors, PPRs. Furthermore, virus-induced massive cell death can activate damage-associated molecular pattern receptor mediated signaling. Moreover, virus infection activate and or recruit lymphoid cells and myeloid cells in the region. All these events individually and or synergistically activate the IL-6 amp through synergistic interaction between STAS-3 and NF-kappa-B, leading to cytokine storm. Several evidence supports the idea that COVID-19 is a cytokine storm syndrome. Firstly, dexamethasone, anti-inflammatory drug, is shown to be effective to treat severe COVID-19 patients. RAS inhibitors, such as ACE inhibitors and angiotensin to type 1 receptor inhibitors, are beneficial for COVID-19 patients with hypertension. Anti-ISC receptor antibody, tocilizumab, is suggested to be effective to treat severe COVID-19. Furthermore, baricitinib, an inhibitor for JAK1 and JAK2, is reported to prevent COVID-19 severity, 
followed by lowering R6 and TNF alpha. Although further studies are necessary, it is possible that R6 AMP plays critical roles in severe COVID-19. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge many people, mentors, teachers, friends, colleagues, and students. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Hirano. We are deeply impressed by this excellent presentation and we are very grateful for your life's work, which certainly has been and will be to the benefit of millions of patients. It's my privilege now to grant you the ITOC 7 Lifetime Achievement Award. Next slide. Thank you. We, have, we are experiencing technical difficulties. So Professor Hirano asked me to read out his words um, um, for the ITOC 7 Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, Professor Michael van Bergwald. It's my great honor to receive the ITOC 7 Lifetime Achievement Award. I would like to thank all members of the prize committee and once again, thank all my collaborators and my families. At the time of the discovery of interleukin-6 in 1986, no one knew that IL-6 is such an important cytokine. After 34 years, IL-6 is found to be one of, key, of the key players in inflammation, autoimmunity and cancer. And its inhibitors are used as therapeutic agents for different diseases. It is also expected to be effective in the treatment of cytokine storm in COVID-19. I'm deeply moved to receive the award at such times. Shall we overcome cancer to open the happy future of humankind together with all of you? I'm really thankful to you. This needs no further comment. Thank you very much, Professor Hirano.